Uh, they get to go on a road trip with their peers with an airplane they just built to one of the biggest air shows in the world. In short, in the United States, you as an individual, if you're smart and have some fabrication skills, you can go out, design and build your own aircraft, either from scratch or from a kit, and as long as you go through all the proper channels and have it inspected by the FAA, uh, have a reasonable log and all that, and they deem it flight worthy and done to good engineering standards, then you can fly it. Now, of course, there's everything that gets into it with insurance and inspections and pilot's license and all that. But we do have that opportunity in the United States. So this is a perfect thing for Genius Garage. So it came down to, as a leader, what kind of airplane are we going to pick? So naturally, it needed something that, with our resources here at the shop, be that tools or money or whatnot, that we would be able to accomplish well. It also needed to be something that was within the skill level of college engineers who, let's face it, across the board don't generally have real good fabrication skills because they've been doing the theoretical aspect in a college prep course. Um, and that educational direction doesn't usually afford a lot of time for being hands-on. So that's, that's another tidbit of why Genius Garage is so important. But so we've got to have the resources, we've got to have something that the students will be able to do, and they'll also be able to do within the time they have. And then when I looked at it, I wanted something that was iconic. So ended up choosing the Sopwith Camel, which is one of the most famous airplanes of history, uh, especially the First World War. We're talking that, uh, you know, 1914 and 1918 realm, so 100 years ago now. Uh, and the Sopwith Camel was famous for being what Snoopy, <laughs> the character, always dreamed of uh, flying when he was on his doghouse against the Red Baron. So, you know, even just in pop culture, there's a lot of references to it. But a Sopwith Camel is a biplane. So you've got the upper wing and then the lower wings, and you have a typical empennage, the tail, and everything goes into a typical conventional uh, single-engine propeller-driven airplane. Uh, a Sopwith Camel is also something that is covered in fabric. Uh, with its basic tubular structure, kind of like an, um, an endoskeleton of an animal versus the exoskeleton of a bug, or for instance, the uh, aluminum BD-5 jet aircraft uh, build behind us. So where I'm going with this is, even though the stop with camel design is a century old, it's still incredibly valuable and important today and relevant for Genus Scratch to be able to teach because, of course, it's cultural, important, and famous for world history and all, and a great history lesson, but... Everything that goes into aerospace engineering, aerospace fabrication, and of course working together as a team to build something amazing can go into a stop with camel. So it's exciting when something that's historical and old and kind of irrelevant in a way matters for today. It's the best way to teach. And it's also exciting because all the students were very excited about it. Now, truth be told, the Genius Garage Stop with Camel uh, came from basic plans that we were able to buy and most of the materials we were able to get from this uh, this individual so has a, a small business. And it's, of course, stretched in fabric, a different kind of fabric than way back when. And instead of being primarily a wooden construction of all of the ribs and the fuselage and what, this is primarily metal. You'll build, b bend aluminum for the ribs. Uh, and then, of course, there's tubular steel and tubular aluminum and everything in that. Uh, it uses rivets in its construction as well as welding and a lot of other things. So in that way, it differs greatly from the original stop with camel of 100 years ago but still teaches all of the same basic things. Building the rib, which is a cross-section of a, a wing and the airfoil shape and what that is. Obviously your weight and balances, all the controls, all the cables to your rudder and your elevators and your ailerons and making all that happen. And then of course actually stretching it with a fabric and then making that be tight and right to be able to fly. And of course, you know, your engine, everything goes into an airplane. And that sounds incredible to most people who don't ever think about building an airplane because there's some magic things that fly only done by super nerds in white rooms with <laughs> calculators and funny glasses, right? No. The Wright brothers were bicycle mechanics. They were normal people that had an interest, a mechanical. They asked questions. They could use scientific theory when they were building a wind tunnel and trying to figure it out. There are people that, had, that dared to dream. They were people that could look at a bird and keep looking at it and watching it and taking notes and figure out how it flew. When, the, when a bird changes its wing to come in for a landing, whatever the, if it's flaring or whether it's turning or banking or soaring on a thermal, you as an individual or me or the Wright brothers so long ago would watch that. It gets into the wing warping of their airplane, which effectively what we do with airlines today. But those were normal people. In the Experimental Aircraft Association in the United States, normal people that are smart, just like the Wright brothers so long ago, have the opportunity to build their own airplane. 
And that's exactly what we got to do with Genius Garage here. Um, and to my knowledge, Genius Garage is the only educational organization in the world that lets college students come together and in just a few months build their own airplane that will be flight worthy and fly. Last year, uh, we effectively built it over four months. In March, the room that it was in was empty. Even the tables that we used to draw the plans out of the wing and lay the wings out and build the wings on didn't exist. The students built the tables as their first thing and then started bringing all the materials and building the plane over months and months and months. And it was a tall order. In fact, the gentleman that uh, initially drew out the plan said that was the fastest and best he's ever seen one ever built. But uh, we had to do it because Oshkosh, or, um, which is commonly referred to as, or the um, Air Venture by the EAA in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, is one of the top two biggest air shows in the world. There were 700,000 people there over the course of a week. And something like 10,000 airplanes? Something absolutely ridiculous. It's true. It's amazing. Uh, representing history and uh, engineering and aerospace engineering, the, the past and the present and the future. So it's very exciting. But the people there were very nice to Genius Garage in giving the students an opportunity. And the students had an opportunity to display their sop with camel if they got it done at the 100th anniversary of the last year of World War I on the flight line with other World War I aircraft. Um, which they were able to make it happen to do. With two weeks to go, the airplane wasn't even covered or painted. So what was so amazing to me as a founder of Genius Garage and why I did this and watching it go, even though the aerospace program for Genius Garage was brand new last year and had never been done, the, the formula for what is Genius Garage and the opportunities it gives to young people to come together as professionals, learn how to think, to process think, to work as a team, to solve problems, to, do, to figure out how to look at something and have the confidence to know that, yes, you can do something you've never done as long as you look at it right and you have the, the right mentality toward it. But, you know, they succeeded in getting that done. They succeeded in displaying it. The Genius Scratch students stopped with camels displayed right next to like flawless replicas and originals of albatrosses and stopped with pups and um, Fokers and you know, Blarios. Absolutely incredible. So, you know, our students got to travel even beyond their normal when we take them to like NASA or the National Museum of the Air Force or Pratt and Miller or something. It's just, it's spectacular. Some of our students had never been out of their home state before. They'd never even flown on an airplane. And, and their first flight, they're getting to go up on a 1926 Ford Trimotor. And the first time they get to leave their home state, uh, they get to go on a road trip with their peers with an airplane they just built to one of the biggest air shows in the world to be right there on the flight line. So it was... Um, it's just an amazing journey the whole way. Uh, as a founder of Genius Garage, I, I loved it so much seeing that the Genius Garage program could be successful and work in aerospace. You know, I was also so touched that the aviation community in general was so supportive and excited for what the students are doing. In fact, we got a great article coming out in Sport Aviation Magazine, I think, this coming month. And we just had a great one in Aviation Nation Magazine. So check those out. But it was also wonderful because the students doing the Sop with Camel build in the aerospace part of our building were doing that at the same time that the racing students are working on their Corvette or their IndyCar. So what's cool about Genius Garage, and you even got the design students in the other room too, what's cool about it is all the students that come here, whether you're working on race cars or airplanes or you're designing on paper and doing clay studio models, you get to learn from everybody else. You get to have those peers and help you through school and life and fun. So it, uh, it was very exciting. Uh, the Sop with Camel did not fly in 2018. We're actually finishing up now to fly in 2019 in a couple of months. Of course, it's got to be inspected by the FAA, but we are very confident in that. And we have a, uh, a lifetime uh, professional pilot <laughs> who can marry, m measure his time in the air by years. He's literally got like over, oh my God, some obscene amount of hours through his lifetime. But he's very excited about what we've done too. And just another aspect of how the aviation world has really cared about Genius Garage and what these students are doing. I think they're setting a standard for the future. Uh, I'm certainly excited to see their plane fly. I know they are too. And we've got great other things coming for Genius Garage with the aerospace project. So whether it maybe is that BD-5 microjet uh, behind me from the Roger Moore Octopussy James Bond, or maybe it's that red and white long easy composite airplane over there to restore. Uh, I'm really excited about what Genius Garage Aerospace is going to do. I hope you guys subscribe. I'll catch you next time.